Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, based on wherever you are in the world. Uh, thank you for reviewing my presentation. This is the first time I have ever done um, a presentation recorded asynchronous, so it's a little different for me. Um, thank you for coming. I wish I was with you all in Amsterdam. Maybe next year we will be able to meet together. My presentation, my name is Kelly Whalen George. I work for Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. My co-author is Dr. Patty Clark. She also is a professor at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. Our, uh, our presentation is called Why We Were Sleeping, a review of the impacts of the One Belt, One Road initiative on sustainability, and we focused on the aviation industry. Okay, a little bit of an introduction, One Belt, One Road, or I'll refer to it as OBAR. It was initiated by China in about, why is, okay, I'm sorry. I'm looking at my timer and I think I'm just, I'm having a little bit of a technological difficulty. So One Belt, One Road, it was initiated by China. It was based on the original Silk Road from medieval ages, the trading, uh, expansion. It's an outward expansion of economic expansion, expansion of China. It connects trade on a truly global scale. I'll go over a little bit of that. It covers trade, communications, infrastructure, digital infrastructure, information technology, and culture. 26% of the initiatives are aviation related. Um, this is not unfounded. Even Adam Smith, he discussed in his earlier writing, earliest writings that government had a role to play in initial economic development, especially in emerging countries, and to facilitate trade. Um, so we think uh, Adam, Adam Smith would not only encourage this economic development, but we think he would condone sustainable development because it just benefits everyone. So let's see. So sustainable development, I'm going to switch over. This is where we believe the intersection of the economy, environment, and so society meet. Um, it should not compromise the ability of meeting future needs. It should meet not only present needs, but have ability to growth. Uh, the Brundtland Report definition of sustainability really looks at the needs of the world's poor and says that's where the priority level should be given. Um, hopefully, I, it's hard to even look at limitations of uh, development of limitations by technology because what we've seen over just in the last decade, how technology has facilitated uh, development just let, by leaps and bounds and specifically even just in the past year as, re, as, a, 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 re, um, as a reaction to COVID, uh, I just think how much business quickly shifted to a remote virtual environment and how much was developed along the way out of necessity. So there is great uh, opportunity for sustainable development under OBAR. Okay, so what is OBAR? There's about 68% of OBAR related projects are all transportation based, railroad and aviation. Uh, there's 193 discrete infrastructure projects of which a quarter are aviation related. Um, so our question is, are they going to meet the basic tenets of sustainability, both currently and in the future? What does this mean for international uh, air, air transportation? Uh, countries are going to move from a less developed economic status to a more mature economic status. Uh, legal maintenance and safety policies, those all have to be included into this project. And not just in one country, they need to be integrated across all uh, borders as well. Okay. Here's the new uh, One Belt, One Road, the new Silk Road, some people refer to it. 
Uh, the old Silk Road is the uh, light orange lines. Uh, so we have those, we still have those, but now we're going to superimpose the maroon line is the new projects. And then if you look at the maritime trading, uh, trading routes, you see the old by the light blue and then the addition of the trading routes through the darker blue lines. It really is uh, impactful. Let me give you some statistics about this. Um, Let's see, that's about $1 trillion of capital, six major corridors, 65 countries, 60% of the global population. That alone is really uh, a significant statistic to, to me. 40% of global economic output is covered in this, uh, in this plan. And then you have all the facilitating structure that's going to be needed, all the uh, communication networks. Think of the, uh, the natural resources, the mines, the power plants that's going to be needed to be integrated into this uh, system. Most of all of these projects are fi financed in uh, some way, shape or form through three Chinese sources. The International Fund, I think it's the Export-Import Bank, the Silk Road Fund, and a Development Bank. So just for emphasis, let me show you this map once again. 40% of economic trade is covered in this entire map, 60% of the population, and that will grow. As you look at some of these areas, you can see where uh, the influence and the migration of populations will be towards these uh, centers of trade as uh, the opportunity for furthering your income and your economic status are presented. Looking at just uh, the aviation part, portion of this, uh, aviation at the time is almost secondary because um, they are, the Chinese are developing out the rail and the maritime uh, structures. But eventually you can see how aviation will fit and integrate into that map. You're gonna have cargo facilities, additional airports. You have a lot of interest of uh, airport infrastructure investment. I have a list of number of countries, Bulgaria, France, Albania, Siberia, Belgrade, Hungary, Frankfurt, and Italy. Um, these are just smaller airports along the trading line to make trade more efficient. Um, they are not passenger terminals yet, but you can see how eventually uh, as business grows, as trade grows, uh, you're going to have to have those passenger terminals. Just as an aside, um, Italy is uh, on this and there is a theory, there is some research that some of the earlier impacts when COVID was starting to expand out of China into other areas, that Italy was hit so hard so early on because of their relationship with China. That's not, you know, I'm not degrading anyone. I'm just saying it's, you know, it's a fact of showing how um, these connections are already being felt. So, um, Currently, global trade is uh, between the American continents. It's not necessarily dominated by aviation. It's more truck, rail, and pipeline. Globally, uh, trade is dominated by maritime, only 10% by aviation. Uh, aviation facilitates very high value goods, spoilage, uh, goods that you don't want to put on a tanker and sit for you know, two to three weeks or even longer. Um, so uh, again, aviation, as far as the structure of OBAR, we do think it's going to be secondary, but it's certainly a part of this project. Uh, let's see. We tried to do kind of a pro and con balance. We looked at the World Trade Office. Um, they have 16 Sustainable Development Goals, SG, SDGs, excuse me. So on the left side of the column, we looked for all the pros. Uh, there is a lot of opportunities where you have a flow of cap capital to the most productive opportunities. You have standardization possibilities across borders to really facilitate 
uh, and make trade more efficient and lower the costs and bring people goods and services that had been underserved up to this point. You have labor mobility. Uh, people can move from different regions uh, to further and to increase their economic uh, status. And you have technological advancement. You know, as, as things grow new and integration of various facilities, you're going to have some type of a technological advancement. Um, on the con load, uh, on the con side, a lot of these projects come with a heavy debt load for the home, the home country or the local country. And some people view this as an imperial Chinese expansion uh, rather than just a good um, economic expansion. Question of how will the benefits be uh, shared? Will the local economy really get their fair share of the benefits from, a di from uh, developing all these projects or will they get some and most get drawn back into the, the, uh, the country of China? So turning over to three spheres of sustainability, this is a model that we teach at our university. We say that um, uh, sustainability to really grow, you really have to hit on three, three impacts. You have to have this social, economic, and environment. And OBAR really does focus, on, it can um, develop through those three, those three pillars. You have the economic, I think that's rather plain. You have the environment, the impact of all this economics. Um, how do you impact the environment around you? And then you have the social. You have 60% of the world population that you're going to be integrating under this system. Can it be done sustainably? These are the, this is the framework you would want to look at. Okay, with respect to aviation, we broke it down into six categories when we were looking at sustainable development. Um, you have the infrastructure and capacity, the workforce, the debt, emissions, safety and regulation, and the indirect, the follow-on growth that's going to happen as OBAR uh, takes, takes impact and grows. There's going to be additional uh, development. With respect to infrastructure, um, China and all along the OBAR roads, there's going to have to be additional airports and all the system capabilities that go with it. There's going to be a lot of cargo that's moving through these areas as uh, capacity constraints get strained. So um, there's going to be additional work, uh, workforce that's going to be needed and skilled workforce international agreements because a lot of this cargo and this trade is going to be cross-border and uh, increasing their equipment. Uh, can this be developed? I think that's the question of everyone says, can we develop this whole system uh, in a sustainable way? The UN Habitat Pilot did a project. They have a, uh, a a report that they came out with and they had a number of recommendations of how to do this that yes it can be but it's not a one-off uh, build you do have to have a lot of intention and cooperative agreements in place to develop this sustainably uh, workforce development i have an old economics instructor uh, who used to talk about workforce development. We're talking about skilled workforce. This isn't uh, the brute workforce or labor that, as he used to say, carries a rock from here to there. Uh, these, this workforce is going to have to be skilled in information technology and um, language, things like that, computer systems, uh, leading edge technology skills. So that is an expanded, um, that, is an ex that is a sustainable uh, action item. Uh, we've seen a little bit of pilot shortage. It uh, softened a bit over the last year as air travel drastically dropped. But as COVID is starting to get under control along in different parts of the globe, 
you're starting to see the pressure on uh, pilots. Uh, we talked, one little thing is uh, pilots in China have, they have lower training requirements and experience. So how do you integrate that into the rest of the globe? That needs to be addressed. The debt burden. Uh, I'm an economist, so this really impacts, this really caught my attention. So you have three sources uh, for these projects for the development. You have the Silk Road, China Development Bank, and the Export and Import Bank. So there's a project, they go into the, China goes into the area, they said, we want to develop this port system. Um, we have a development bank, we can offer you favorable terms, and there's a debt load that you will take after development, once it's in operation, you can service the debt with the re revenue from the operation. Uh, so there is concern that this is a weaponization of debt. The debt would be secured by the facilities. What happens if that port or that facility, whatever facility it is, actually can't service the debt, then it goes back as collateral to the Chinese. And so there you have the economic expansion, you know, the imperial expansion that some people criticize. There is a story of a port in Sri Lanka that um, did not take up uh, the Chinese's offer to expand their port. And then there was a concerted effort to change shipping lines and uh, ports to where the Sri Lankan ports is now um, significantly weakened because of, of the changing in the trade routes. And uh, some would say that it was in retaliation for them not to take up um, the, uh, the offer of additional infrastructure and finance. Let's see, okay, uh, emissions, 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 emissions. Transportation accounts for, last we checked, about 30% of global emissions. That is a, um, a direct transportation. There's a lot of indirect. Freight is about 40% of energy use, and aviation really only accounts for 2% of transportation emissions. We expect that to grow as um, trade increases and aviation use increases. That is going to grow unless we can get some technological advancement in uh, trade agreements. Um, that again uh, is not a high watermark or a high performance mark with China. Um, we expect though with our new US administration as of 2021 that um, sustainability and greenhouse gases will become a bigger focus. The safety and regulatory framework, we really would like for a sustainable framework, you've got to build that into the system before. You need to have uh, everyone operating in safety management systems across borders and across the framework and get some uh, standardization um, between all the industry stakeholders, definitely with aviation. Um, otherwise, you're going to have um, you're going to have some issues, and that again will be the you know will be dependent upon adopting uh, digital systems and technology and being able to share across borders. The indirect growth we we did speak or we impacted a little bit. Again, we see migration towards these trading centers, which will then bring more people and more passengers, and there's going to be more uh, air connectivity because people are going to travel for business and then tourism um, happens. As these systems build out, costs come down and uh, it will increase the demand for air connectivity and air um, transportation services. So, all of that, what's our conclusion? You know, do we sleep or start acting with, with regards to a sustainable um, perspective? Uh, this mega project, by 2050, we expect that to be about a 5% in global trade, but about 90% of it will be within the region of Obar, the Silk Road. Um, so, uh, 
it, it is going to be expanding. Hopefully, we can all cooperate and we can work to influence uh, sustainable growth. Ooh, let's see, excuse me. We did a little bit of the updates. Uh, Chinese firms, they're very virtually integrated from the project management, finance, construction, and post-project services. Uh, so you can see how there might be a top-down approach. Um, people who are involved in sustainable uh, development feel that that is a, a big risk. Political tensions always impact these things, how, how cooperative things can be developed. I think the last few years have been particularly significant with respect to political impacts. You have the death trap concern. Um, right now, uh, the OBAR projects don't have a great record with regards to emissions. I, uh, the Institute of Inter in International Finance said that 85% of the projects uh, were high emission uh, producing activities. Um, so, and also, uh, you know, then you have the, the follow on, all the impacts, the sewage, the trash, how are you gonna integrate all of this into this system? Uh, in conclusion, Patty and I, you know, we came to the conclusion that yes, things can be developed, sustainability, it's gonna be a heavy lift. Um, we're gonna do some additional, we wanna update this paper um, and look, to, look at the air traffic control system. That is really critical in the Chinese market and to see how cooperative that they've been. And then to look at the uh, development that has happened to look and try and we're going to try and develop some type of a metric um, that denotes how sustainable we see the development that is happening all along the OBAR uh, routes. Well, if we were all together, we would have a great time for Q&A and suge suggestions and discussions. I'm so sorry we're not all together please feel free to post anything on the discussion board. And uh, the program also has my connection, my uh, information. So please reach out and email at any point in time. I look forward to additional discussions. So thank you. This was very bizarre. My first time doing an, an asynchronous presentation. Thank you for viewing it. Have a good conference. Bye all.